If you look at the transmission line, the current flowing through the transmission line is huge. Like it can vary from 1000 ampere to 4000 ampere or even more in some situations. And if you want to measure this current, of course, we need to measure it in order to check uh, for metering purpose and also for protection purpose. And if you want to measure uh, that huge current, you need to build a very big meters which can carry the 4000 ampere. But that will definitely take a lot of space, a lot of money as well. Well, we have a better solution than that. Since we have a transformer in invention, we can use the principle of transformer to lower down the current and then measure that l a smaller amount of current, right? And that is where the current transformer or CT comes into picture. Current transformer can help lowering the huge current to a smaller value which we can connect directly to our meter or relays and that can be measured or used for protection purpose. But if you look at the general construction and the working principle of power transformer, the regular transformer and the current transformer, it varies somewhat. I'm not talking about the basic, basic working principle, but if you go one step deeper into that, then you will notice there is a difference. And in this video, we are going to talk about what is that different along with how what is the working principle of current transformer. So make sure you watch the video till the end. As I mentioned initially, the construction of current transformer is somewhat different than that of the uh, regular power transformer. But for understanding purpose, we are going to take the example of regular transformer, which you can see on your screen. Uh, we'll understand the working principle first. The transformer operates on the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So what you can see is the regular transformer that we have. Here is our primary side to which we have connected a, a primary winding and one number of turns is N1. The supply is EG here, which is producing uh, the EMF EP and the current I1 is flowing. On the secondary side, what you can see, we have a secondary winding N2. Uh, we have connected load Z that is impedance because we don't do not know what type of load it is. So hence the term impedance is used. Now the what happens is when you connect the supply to the primary side, uh, a, a voltage a EMF will be induced and that will cause flux phi m to flow through this core and by mutual inductance that flux will induce a voltage E2 inside the secondary of the uh, transformer, right? And since we have also connected a load here, current I2 will start flowing. And this I2 will be in line with the current I1. So that is the basic and very simple working principle of the transformer. The CT also operates in the similar fashion. But if we go one step deeper to understand what exactly is happening in this, then you will notice there is a difference. So let us understand that. So again, we will continue with our regular transformer example here. The load Z is connected. Now the moment you connect the load Z, two things happen. One, you will see the current I1 will start flowing and current I2 will start flowing. Now, when we talk about the regular transformer, the I1 depends upon the I2. So when there is a load, uh, the I2 will flow and then only the current I1 will flow. Uh, in practical transformer, even if you do not connect the load, a small amount of current uh, will flow that is very negligible to serve the losses. Uh, that we have already talked uh, in our one of the video wherein we did a circuit simulation. I'll provide link for that down in the description. You can go and check it out for more details. So when I2 starts flowing, of course, the I1 will start flowing in the transformer. Now there are a lot of things happen when these two currents starts flowing. First, when the I1 starts flowing, it produces its own magnetomotive force that is uh, given by N1. Uh, times I1. N1 is what? N1 is the number of turns at the primary side and I1 is the current that is flowing in the primary side. So they are producing their own magnetomotive force, right? And this magnetomotive force will generate its own flux, which is given by phi1. Now, one portion of this phi1 will be linked with the secondary of the transformer and that is given by phi m1. Now, wherever you see M, M indicates the mutual inductance or the mutual linking. So phi M1, right? And some part of that will be, will not link to the secondary of the transformer. And that is called as phi F1, which is the leakage flux. And this is the flux that will link with the uh, uh, surrounding air, let's say, for example, because air is also having permeability and that will link with the uh, air. So that is leakage flux. 
right understood i1 is flowing uh, i1 is uh, creating mmf that is causing the flux phi 1 some part of that is getting linked with the secondary and some part is not now the i2 is also flowing right so i2 will also produce its own magnetomotive force which is given by n2 by i2 n2 is what n2 is the number of turns of secondary winding and i2 is the current that is flowing in the secondary winding clear now since there is a mmf of course there will be flux and that uh, will be we are labeling that as phi 2 right now some part of that phi 2 is again getting linked with the primary of the coil which we are giving by phi m2 right and some part will not link uh, which is the leakage flux and that we are labeling as phi f2 so if you look at the total flux phi 2 it is divided into two portion uh, phi m2 and phi f2 Two. Now, if you notice, flux phi m1 is in opposite direction that of the flux phi m2. So, the resultant flux in the transformer will be the subtraction of these two and the net flux is given by phi m. Now, phi m is what is the uh, net flux that remains after you subtract the phi m1 and phi f2, right? And this flux is important because this is responsible for, uh, you know, ES the secondary voltage uh, this depend upon this so this is the resultant flux in the transformer so what you have to remember is that uh, whenever we connect load to the transformer the secondary current starts flowing and that will produce its own flux which will oppose the flux produced by the uh, current I1 and the resultant flux is phi m which is responsible for the secondary voltage ES now one thing that you have to remember here is that the power on the both the end must remain same so let's say for example we are giving uh, the 10 kva is the power at the primary side right the same power will also be available at the secondary side so even let's say if you are uh, stepping down the voltage uh, then the current must go up in order to satisfy this 10 kva so that is very very important and that is satisfied in the transformer the current transformer also operates in the same principle but as i mentioned there is one major difference between these two now let us understand what is that so let's say this is our current transformer uh, this is the primary side this is let's say a primary transmission conductor that we are putting this is p1 and this is p2 right now the major difference is that the in the construction part of the current transformer current transformer will not have two windings what I mean by that, let's, let me explain. Let's say this is the primary, uh, this is the conductor of which we need to measure the current. Now what CT will have, CT will have only the secondary winding. The current, uh, the conductor of which we need to measure the current will act as a primary, right? So this is the primary conductor. So, and this is the secondary and here you can connect your meter or the relay right so you will generally see uh, this is the conductor and this is the secondary of the current transformer so it's a window type current transformer so this primary conductor will act as the conductor of which we need to measure the current will act as the primary winding right and the secondary will be a dedicated winding but the biggest issue with this that the current transformer we connected in series and it is also called as the series transformer the problem with this type of uh, current transformer is that irrespective of the fact that whether there is a load connected on the secondary or not, the primary current keeps flowing, right? So for example, if you are connecting a current transformer in the transmission line, the current will be flowing continuously irrespective of the fact that whether there is a load connected on the secondary side or not so basically in current transformer there is no relationship between the secondary current and the primary current primary current will keep on flowing doesn't matter if there is a load connected on the secondary side or not but when we talk about the uh, power transformer the in power transformer the primary current depends upon the secondary current right but that is not the case in the uh, current transformer and that is the biggest problem and that is also the reason why we cannot keep the uh, secondary of the current transformer open circuited we'll talk about that in the next video so make sure you subscribe to the channel with bell notification icon turned on so that you will get notified when the video is published or if the video is already available i'll provide link for that video down in the description you can go and check it out and understand 
why we cannot keep the secondary of current transformer open circuited right i hope you understood the working principle of current transformer very important uh, uh, for understanding right so if you found this video helpful then please do like this video and do share it with your friends colleague that will really help the channel to grow further thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching keep learning